Propel service. I am excited about this, and this is why. Because now that there's no middle schoolers here, I'm going to lay on the line for you guys. You are in big trouble. It's about to go PG-13 up in this joint. So here we go, here we go. So welcome to our kickoff of How to Be Awesome. I know you're thinking, what are you going to teach me about awesome because you're a big dork? But I have awesome friends, so I'm just kind of learning from them, and I'll teach you what I learned from them about how to be awesome. So let me tell you this story about this time that I wanted to be awesome. And maybe some of you can relate to this. Where I went to school, I went to school in California, we didn't have like a lot of like middle school sports and stuff. I mean, very little middle school sports were going on. So the first time you ever got to play football was your freshman year of high school. You got, that's the first time you ever got to play football. So it was really like this opportunity. It's like everybody wanted to play freshman football because that was really our first opportunity to start smashing people. We're like this is going to be epic. So I tried out for the freshman football team. I think the good news about freshman football back then was if you tried out, you made the team. So step one, awesome. I was already on my way. So I'm like, yes, this is going to be great. So we start playing some freshman football and I am um, not good. So they kind try to find some positions for me. They're like, yeah, yeah, you'll be a wide receiver. Oh, wait, you're too slow and you can't catch the ball. Okay, so maybe you'll do something else. So I was like, I don't know. I, I was like the smallest defensive end on the planet or something, I think I ended up playing. So, but this is what happened when I, this was my chance to be awesome. I'm like, I am gonna make an impact. I'm gonna be that popular football player, dude. And this is what happened when we started playing football is that one, I was super scared. Like, some of these dudes were monsters, and they'd just run, just stiff arm you and just run right over the top of you. And I'm like, uh, I could get violently hurt playing football. This is the worst idea I've ever had. And then, because I was scared, and I realized I was smaller than a lot of the dudes already, I didn't put in a lot of work. So like practice, I'm kind of they're like, yeah, I do wind sprints. I'm like, ah, wind jogs sound about the same as wind sprints. So I didn't really put in the work. So I wasn't very good. In fact, I was so bad. Uh, I have this team picture that David's going to put up for me. This is the team picture. And this is how bad I was at football was uh, the day of the team picture, I didn't even wear the right jersey. I'm the guy in the middle, if you could zoom in on the next picture, I'm the guy in the middle in the wrong jersey. They had to like find a spot for me that didn't make the picture look terrible because I wasn't even smart enough and didn't put in enough effort to even wear the right jersey for team pictures. I was not awesome, that is for sure. So let me just tell you, awesome, being awesome doesn't just happen. It's not going to just act. You don't accidentally become awesome at something. And that's really what I learned through freshman football. And so maybe you can relate to that. Maybe there's something that you wanted to be awesome at, but you made a decision like, I'm scared, or that seems like a lot of work. And it, and it turned into you not being awesome at that because you gave up or you made a wrong decision or you chose something else. And at our house, we talk a lot about opportunity costs. I don't know if you guys talk about that at school, but it's all about you can do this or that. You can't do both. And so decision-making can kind of affect whether or not you're going to become awesome at something. Like, for example, I really want some sweet washboard abs, but every time somebody says donuts, I'm like, I'm in. I'm all in on donuts, right? 
So I'm making the decision to eat donuts instead of having washboard abs. So speaking of being awesome, this is step number one for you being awesome right now. Pull out your connection card and write your name on that thing. If you can do that, you're on your way to awesome right now. Fill out your connection card. Hannah's already awesome. Good job, Hannah. You're way ahead. So fill out your connection card really quick. There'll be some next steps on the back we'll talk about later. But that's step number one to being awesome tonight is fill out your connection card. Cameron, you're not going to be awesome because you are not filling out your connection card, bro. Somebody get Cameron a connection card. He needs to fill that thing out. All right, so, so being awesome isn't just something that just happens. You have to put some work into it to be awesome at something. And whether it's, whether it's you know, you want to be musically inclined, you want to do sports, you want to be good in school, whatever it is, it doesn't just automatically happen. You have to make a decision to be good at it. You have to make a decision that that's something you want to do. And the choices you make will determine whether or not you're awesome at that thing. I don't know if you guys ever heard this. There's a saying out there that to be an expert at something, you have to spend 10,000 hours doing it. So last week, I think Tim talked about Michael Jordan, or a couple weeks ago, Tim talked about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was an expert because he spent all of his time playing basketball. They say 10,000 hours doing something to become an expert at it. So you think you're an expert at something, 10,000 hours is equal to this. If you had a 40-hour a week job, you'd have to do that for five years for 10,000 hours. So if you want to be an expert piano player, you need to play the piano eight hours a day, five days a week for five years. That is a lot of dedication to become an expert at something. But that's a decision you have to make. If you want to be awesome at something, you have to make that decision to do that. So when we talk about, you know, getting better grades or being better at something or how, just being awesome in general, it all comes down to decisions. So let's do a quick test. I, I'm going to do a quick test with you. If you have a math test tomorrow, should you A, go home and study for your math test or B, go home and watch Netflix? B. Which one will actually help you get a better grade? B. Studying, right? Right? If, if, you want to try to beat Danny Dorsey at ping pong, should you practice ping pong or should you just switch to air hockey? Which one should you, right? You have to make, you have to make a decision of which one you want to do. If you actually want to date somebody, you have to make the decision whether or not you're going to shower or not shower. Because because if you stink... That's a decision you're going to make that you're never going to date somebody. Sorry. Um, but if your, goal, if your goal in life is to be awesome at drawing, maybe you're a great artist and you want to be even better, you want to be awesome at it, you have to make a decision that you're going to do things that are going to make you better at that. So how do you become awesome at something like drawing? Well, you have to make the decision to spend time drawing. But what if the thing you want to be awesome at is bigger than drawing. Maybe it's, it's a lot bigger than that. Maybe you want to be awesome at your friendships or awesome uh, with your family or awesome at school or awesome in your future career, whatever that is. Awesome at your reputation, awesome at your faith. What thing do you want to be awesome at that you can have some decision making around? And when you get into these bigger decisions like, I want to be great in my career someday, and you're sitting here and you're like, great, I'm a sophomore. I have no idea what, what that even means. The decisions you make now aren't quite so black and white all of a sudden because it's hard to know whether or not the decision you're making is, is really important for what's happening in the future. So what we're going to talk about through this whole series of how to be awesome is just all the different steps to be awesome. But the whole idea is that you fulfill God's purpose for your life and through that you will be fulfilled. Because everybody wants to be fulfilled with whatever they're doing, right? You don't want to go, just go through the motions like, well, that was boring, right? It's whatever you're doing, you want to do it and enjoy it. You want to be fulfilled in what you're doing, and that's going to take decisions. So whether it's a big goal or a small goal, it all comes down to decisions, and that's what we're going to talk a lot about tonight. So 
Decisions matter. That's the key of this whole thing. The decisions you make, small or big, matter. So number one on your outline is this, and it's on the screen. Decision making is unavoidable. Unavoidable. You can't not make a decision. Is that double negative? Yeah. Okay, so as high schoolers, you guys already have a ton of stuff on your plate, like which group you should hang out with at school, or should you stay away from that person that stinks that keeps trying to date you, or, you know, like, how do I deal with conflict because this teacher, I think they hate me and they're mean to me. How do I deal with that conflict? Or, you know, there's, how do you deal with family conflict? How do you deal with your fight with your friend? What decision do you make to get past that? You guys are going through all of this stress every day of all these things happening to you, and you have to make decisions around that. And the hard part is, is a lot of times we don't make healthy decisions for whatever reason. We're just like, uh, I don't know what to do. So what happens is really th three things happen when you have to make a difficult decision. And these aren't in your outline, but if you want to write them down, you can. The first one is if you have a difficult decision, and let's just use this as the example. How many here know exactly what you're going to do when you graduate high school? It's good. It's good. All right. Tim figured it out finally. Good job, bro. Um, so maybe like 25% of you or whatever know exactly what you're going to do after high school. The rest of you not quite sure. So let's talk, let's talk about that as the example of a difficult decision that you're going to make. So one of the ways you could deal with that difficult decision is you can ignore it and hope it goes away. Well, bad news, you can't really ignore the decision of what am I going to do after high school because eventually it's going to be after high school and you're going to have to do something. Whatever that is. So ignore it and hope that goes away, what do we call that? Procrastination, right? It's like, why do something today if you can do it tomorrow, right? That's like the ultimate thing of, you know, anybody here good at procrastinating? I'm the master at it. <laughs> <laughs> he's working towards expert level status. Five years, 40 hours a week, he's been procrastinating on his way to being expert level. So, so this is the thing though. Choosing to procrastinate and ignoring a decision is making a decision. You're making the decision not to make a decision, right? You've made a decision. It is to not make a decision. So ignoring it and hoping that it goes away doesn't really help you. In fact, it usually hurts you because then your decision-making ability gets smaller and smaller the longer you wait. Like high school, if you were deciding, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, so I'm like, I'm not going to make any decision. Well, then when you get ready to graduate, you're like, well, I haven't prepared for graduating for high school, and now I've decided I'm going to go to Harvard. Well, let's see. You didn't get the grades you needed because you never made a decision about that. You didn't take any of the tests you need. You didn't take ACT, SAT. Guess what? You're not going to Harvard because you didn't make the decisions earlier. You tried to procrastinate as long as possible, and now the decisions you can make are a lot smaller, and, and, and you're kind of confined in the decisions you can make. So the other thing you can do when you have facing a difficult decision, some of us do this, is let someone else make the decision for you. I don't know, what do you think? Right? Anybody ever said that? It's like, that's like the classic, I don't know if you guys have ever felt with this with your family, but Sunday afternoons after church, it's like, where do you want to go to lunch? Nobody can make a decision about, it's like, oh, you decide. No, you decide. I'm going home. I can't decide. So... Letting somebody else make your decisions probably isn't going to work out for your long-term being fulfilled. Because you're trying to fulfill your vision and God's vision for your life, not somebody else's. So if you decide right now as a freshman or something, you're like, well, my mom's always said I should go to Georgia Tech because she went to Georgia Tech and I'm going to go be an engineer because she said I'd be a good engineer someday. And you just go do that, and then you get a degree at Georgia Tech to be an engineer, and then you decide you hate engineering, you're not going to be very fulfilled. So you can't let other people make your decisions for you. You need to make those decisions. So that's, that happens sometimes when we're facing a difficult decision, though. And the other thing that can happen when we have to make a difficult decision is sometimes we make a real quick decision, a rash decision, and then there's consequences for that decision because we didn't think it through. We just made a quick decision like, 
Should I eat that donut or not eat that donut? Okay, well, that's an easy decision for me. I'm going to eat the donut every time. But you have to be careful about that because if you don't plan ahead, you, you can get into trouble with that. So, like, all of a sudden, if you're going to graduate high school and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to go to work because I need money. I need money. I want to buy a new car. I need money right now. So you go get a job, and you're making decent money. You're making, you know, that $12 an hour. It's like, woo, I'm living the high life, right? But then all of a sudden, your friends graduate high school, or, uh, sorry, college five years from now, and they're all making triple what you're making, but you made a rash decision to go after the quick cash earlier, and so you haven't really thought through it. You just made a quick decision. Or maybe you decided, you know what, I'm going to go to school. I didn't apply for any scholarships. I didn't do anything, I, I, but I, I got into school, so I'm going to go to school. I'm just going to take out student loans for the whole thing. I'll worry about paying it off when I get out of school. So the average student loan debt is about $60,000 to go, go to college. So if you made zero decisions, all decided, I'm just going to borrow all the money to go to school. When you get done with school in four years, you're going to have $60,000 in debt. A 10-year loan to pay off your student loan is $660 a month that you're going to have to pay for the next 10 years of your life. Oh, and by the way, because you're paying interest, you're actually paying $80,000 not $60,000 over that 10 years. But you made a quick decision without worrying about the consequences. So you got to be careful of what happens when you make a rash decision. So you have to be very careful when you're in a difficult decision that you don't jump to one of these things of hoping it goes away and ignoring it or letting somebody else make the decision or just making a quick decision. You need to think through these things. Pastor Jeff's been talking this morning in Wiser, the series we're doing downstairs, a lot about Proverbs, and I love Proverbs. If you guys hear me talk, I always talk about Proverbs. I was so excited when Pastor Jeff challenged us this morning to read one Proverbs a day because I already do that. So I'm like, woo, check the box, I'm in. So <laughs> Proverbs has this great thing in 21.5, and it's in your outline. It should be on the screen now. It says, if you plan and work hard, you will have plenty. If you get in a hurry, you will end up poor. If you make a rash decision and don't think things through, it's going to bite you. There's an old saying, if you're going to be dumb, you better be tough. Because life's going to hurt if you make a bunch of dumb decisions. So kind of rolling off of that, let's get to number two on your outline. It's this. Your decisions have consequences. Your decisions have consequences. So maybe you think that, you know, the decision you're making right now isn't that big a deal, but the truth is every decision you make becomes a big deal eventually. It leads up to things that ultimately matter. It, it's going to affect the way that people around you act towards you, the way they see you, the way you feel about yourself. For example, if I make the decision not to shower, it is going to affect the way people see me and probably smell me. Eventually, it's going to affect my own self because it's going to affect my personality and probably, you know, my self-confidence because everybody's going to be like, oh, the stinky guy, and I'm going to feel kind of bad, right? So it's like every decision has consequences to you and the people around you. And I know it can be hard to think about these things like, you know, if you're here tonight, you're like, oh, I'm a freshman. I don't want to be thinking about college yet. You don't have to, like, have it all figured out, but just realize you can't wait forever to make those decisions, and the, the future that we're talking about can be tomorrow, what you do this weekend, whether or not you're going to go to the dance with this person at prom, whether you know what you're going to do at high school, what you're going to do later in life. The future is all of those things. But you have to consider the short-term and the long-term consequences of all your decisions. A lot of times people talk to me about youth ministry because I tell them, you know, oh, I've been serving in youth ministry for a decade now or something like that. And I always talk, and they always talk about, you know, well, what, what are you trying to do when you're serving with those teenagers or whatever? And I always kind of come back to the same thing, which is, I hope I can make an impact on you guys that you will avoid that one bad decision that makes your life go completely off the rails. That one decision, I'm hoping I will make enough impact and this group will make enough impact that when it comes to that one decision that completely could throw your life off the rails, you will make the right decision. That's all I can really hope in, in the time that we get to spend together for one hour a week, that hopefully you will get that, that when it comes time to make that one decision, you'll make the right 
decision. Because what happens is that you can make a wrong decision and it will alter your life forever. And I know it seems so big and you're like, oh, that couldn't happen to me. But I think we all know people that it's happened to. You could go to the party after the football game on Friday night and get drunk and then get a DUI. Your life is forever changed because you now don't have a license for five years. You can't get a job because you don't have a license. Your insurance is triple whatever it should cost you. You're probably walking from now on for a long time. Or heaven forbid you accidentally hurt somebody while you're DUI. That decision of, oh, I'm okay to drive, or I'm okay to go drinking, or I'm okay to go to this party, each one of those decisions leads up to a consequence. Or maybe you make the bad decision to have premarital sex and get pregnant or get somebody pregnant. Your life is forever changed. You're having a baby. There's a little song, Baby Changes Everything. It's about Christmas, but it really does. It changes everything. <laughs> a baby changes everything. Or maybe you don't take school seriously and now you've kind of messed up because now it's going to be hard for you to get ahead in life later because you didn't build the foundation you need by making good decisions now. You decided, oh, it doesn't matter what I get in math class now. Well, it might later when you need to try to get into that school you want to go to. So I just want you to know the decisions you make are so important. And sometimes we make dumb decisions. And sometimes we make decisions based on what society tells us should, we should do, and it's totally the wrong decision. In fact, this week, I was browsing through Twitter, and for whatever reason on Twitter, like if, if somebody I'm following likes something, sometimes it shows up on your feed. Does anybody realize that? So it's like somebody liked something that there was this kid that was coming to our youth group here uh, last year for a little while, and he tweeted something, and he put, I just want to be happy again. And I said, oh, man, I wonder what's wrong with that guy. That stinks. I wonder what's going on with him or whatever. And then about an hour later, I noticed another tweet popped up because somebody else liked it. And it said, I need to get blackout drunk ASAP. Now, let me tell you, the decisions that he is making, not going to lead down a good path. If he's looking for happiness, blackout drunk is not the path that's going to get him where he needs to go. But that's what society tells us. That's what our friends tell us. Oh, you had a bad week at school? Come to the party. We'll just get hammered. Everything will be better. No, no, it won't. I've been that guy. Trust me, crawling home does not make things better. <laughs> Throwing up on your carpet does not make things better. All that stuff does not make things better. So I just want to be happy again. That's great. Bad decision, I want to get drunk. <laughs> Not going to work out for you. You've got to watch out for those decisions and what people are telling you is a good decision. Your decisions have consequences. Okay, so maybe I haven't answered the important question, which is, you know, how do you make decisions that, how do you make sure you're, you're you know, picking the right path when you're making a decision? And this comes down to something that Jesus said and it's found in Matthew 7, 13, 14. And it goes like this. It says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and men, many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. So according to Jesus, there's two decisions. Write that on your outline. There's two, every time there's only two decisions. You can choose the narrow road or you can choose the wide road, but there's two decisions. You need to decide which one it is. But it says here that all your friends are going to be running down the wide road. So if all your friends are headed down this road, you might want to pump the brakes a second and make sure you're on the right path. Because according to this, you're probably on the, in the, head toward the wide gate, not the narrow gate that you want to be headed through. And Jesus makes it sound so simple, but I think if you, if you put every decision you have to make through that filter of, am I choosing the easy, wide path, or am I choosing maybe the little bit more difficult but rewarding path, for everything you do, it'll make such a difference. 
Because the narrow road leads to life and the wide road leads to destruction or death. And I know God wants good things for you because Jeremiah 29, 11 says that, you know, he knows the plans he has for you, the plans to prosper you. He wants good things for you. So you need to be careful you take the path that he's laid out for you, which is going to be that narrow path. All right, so we're going to kind of start wrapping this up with three reasons we struggle to make wise decisions. Here's some reasons we struggle to make wise decisions. One is we're overloaded. We're overloaded. There are so many voices in our head via friends and family and teachers and coaches and social media and everything else. We can't figure out what to do. Every time we turn to try to maybe get advice, we get different advice and we're just, eh. It's so hard to make a decision when you're overloaded with information. At work, we refer to this as paralysis by analysis. You spend so much time analyzing the decision, you never make a decision. You have to be so careful as you're overloaded with information that you don't get into that situation. The other reason is that we struggle to make wise decisions is we're overwhelmed. And I think a lot of times that just comes down to we're afraid to make the wrong decision. We're afraid. We're, we're overwhelmed with the weight of the decision. It's like, what am I going to do with my life? That's a big decision. What am I going to do? It took me a long time. I, went, I majored in like five things in college because I couldn't figure it out. But we get overwhelmed with the decision, so we, we just don't make a good decision. And the other reason we don't make wise decisions is this. We're overtaken. And when I say overtaken, I mean our circumstances are just a little too much for us. And, and all we can a lot of times see is what seems good right now, not what seems good down the road. And so we're, we're just so overtaken with what's happening that we just make a decision right now and, and don't worry about what the consequences could be five years down the road. So we have to be so careful about being overtaken. I'm going to go ahead and ask the band to come up as we get ready to wrap this thing up. So step one for you on how to be awesome is you have to make wise decisions. And every decision matters. I know that feels very stressful and you're going to make a ton of wrong decisions. But like I was talking about earlier, just be really careful about the big ones. Those big decisions can alter your life the wrong way, and there'll be some serious consequences for that. One of the things I've been learning about recently is I've been trying to get into this fitness thing, and I'm not very good at it yet, but one of the things I heard is that people don't have good willpower. Does anybody here have great willpower? Probably not, right? Nobody's like, yeah, I can, I can will myself. It's like, because I'll, I'll, I'll tell myself, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to eat donuts this week. And then as soon as a donut shows up, I'm in. Ice cream, I'm in for that too. Cake, I'm in for that too. Whatever it is, I'm in for all that, right? But this is what I, lear- this is what I heard, and, and it kind of changed my perspective on this. And it's that if we can eliminate decisions, we will head down the path better. And this is how you eliminate decisions. You decide what you stand for. What are you for and what are you against? And you make that your pledge. If I say, I don't eat donuts, there's not a decision anymore. I don't eat donuts. If it's, I work out on Mondays, it's every Monday I don't have to make a decision. I wonder if I should work out today. No, I work out on Mondays. And the great way to do this is start telling people around you. Because they will hold your butt accountable. Because if you tell your friend, I don't eat donuts anymore, and they see you with a donut, oh man, game over for you, right? So what do you stand for? What, what is it that you are going to be firm with that you always do this or I never do that? Right? Because if it's like, I don't smoke cigarettes, then it's very easy when somebody's like, hey man, you want to smoke cigarettes? No, I don't smoke cigarettes. It does, there's not even a decision to be made anymore. It's just what you believe. It's just what you stand for. So pick those things that you're going to believe and stand for. I don't drink. I don't do smoke cigarettes. 
I'm not going to have sex till after I'm married. Whatever that thing is that you can just say, this is what I stand for. And pick that because that will reduce the number of decisions you have to make on a daily basis. Because now you're just going off of what you believe and what you've told other people you believe. That's so many less decisions you have to make. So I have some next steps for you on your connection card. I want you to choose a couple of these for me. The first one is that you're going to commit to this series, which means I want you here for the next four weeks. I want you to learn how to be awesome. So maybe this is the thing. You don't need to make a decision on Sunday next week of, should I go to church? No, I go to church on Sundays. That's the decision. I, that's what I stand for. I go to church on Sunday nights. I don't have to make a decision whether I'm going. I'm going to go home and tell my parents, hey, for now on, I'm going to go to church on Sunday nights. Can you make sure that happens? Great. No more decisions on Sunday of, do you want to go to church? Nope. They know your plan is you're going to church. That's how you commit to the series. The next one is this. I want you to try to memorize Matthew 7, 13, 14. And it doesn't have to be word for word. But if you can start to filter everything through that idea of the wide gate leads to destruction and the narrow gate leads to prosperity in life, you will start to run all of your decisions through that if you can memorize that idea, that concept of Matthew 7, 13, 14. And then tonight, when you guys get ready to dismiss into groups, I just want you guys to talk openly with the people in your groups about the decisions that you're struggling with. Because you're not the only one struggling with the decisions. This is why we put you guys in groups with people that are your same gender and your same age, because you're all going through the same junk. So just talk openly about, ugh, don't you hate it when X? I don't know what to do when this happens. Just talk openly in group about that. It will make all the difference to, to talk in that environment about it. So with that, I'm going to bring the band back up. They're going to do one last song. So if I get everybody to bow their heads real quick, and we'll pray, bring out the band. God, thank you for this time that we can be together. God, I hope that these students, as they leave here tonight, realize their decisions matter. God, that, that every decision they make can make a difference in their life. If they want to be awesome, God, they have to make the right decisions to follow that awesome path and to avoid the consequences of bad decisions. God, let these students find things that they stand for, God, that are things that are firm in their life, God, that they don't have to make decisions around anymore. God, give them the power to make those statements to their friends so they have that accountability of the things they stand for. God, thank you for this great youth group and this great time we have to get to hang out together. Near me pray. Everybody said, amen. Come on up and worship.